Welcome to On Writing with Ungaravile, a show that aims to promote reading and writing in the communities. We seek to restore pride and dignity of Africans through the power of reading and writing. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ungaravile Mukoto and I am your host. Please subscribe to share online as we are starting our conversation with Aus uh, Nelisiwe Mufutsanyana, who is here to share more on uh, book publicity. Uh, she is a book publicist, by the way. Uh, Sis Nelly, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thanks, Ngarabile. It's, it's, yeah, finally good to be here. Yes, finally, finally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you, you, you are in love with, with uh, publicizing uh, authors, you know, or books. Let's just start with your background when it comes to reading or with books. When, when, when did you fall in love with, with, with books, with reading? You know, I, I, I take it back to my family, how I grew up, you know, family literacy. The issue, the issue of family literacy is very important to me because I realized that I ended up here because simply because my parents loved books and they loved books. They both stayed alive and God bless them. But I grew up in a home with books, lots of books. So for me, reading and books wasn't something I saw or associated with school only. Uh, reading became a leisure activity for me because I saw my parents reading. Um, I, it got normalized to read for, for leisure. So I would say I grew up reading and uh, I credit my parents, number one. It's not there. No, that's great. That's great. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's so inspiring. Now, then the love of publicizing <laughs> books, you know, <laughs> when did that thing start? Okay, so... Um, Okay, so let me just see. So I think, let me see, I think six years ago, because I've been in the, in the book industry for six years now, uh, I think I was doing honors about, about, yeah, six, in 2017, I was doing honors at VITS. And at that, that, that year, um, yeah, I got accepted at the VITS Writing Center to become a writing consultant. Um, and then, you know, in, inevitably that year I got developed, you know, I got to understand, firstly, the writing center at VITS, obviously they, they focus on academic writing. Mm -hmm. That is for postgraduate students and for undergraduate students that come in with your essays, the postgraduate, their research uh, papers and things. And then we'd have to um, assist them in terms of uh, helping them structure their arguments and things like that. And I mean, even in high school, I used to love argumentative essays, you know. So I think somehow it was it, it came naturally to me. But they they also have a very strong training system there. And but the nice thing about the writing center is, you know, Pam, the professor who runs it, and the rest of her team, Jaujelo and yeah, Jaujelo and Nerato, they've created that space and they call it a safe space for writers. So it's not only about academia and all and all of that. It's about being a writer is not easy within the current climate in our country. So they wanted to create a space where being a writer, you were valued, you know, we felt at home. So the this, this, this space historically has been open to people who want to host book launches, poetry workshops, you know, nice bookish things. So, so that's where you actually developed that love of... Exactly. And that's why I also developed the network, to be honest, because what every week there was a book launch. So there was an author coming through, mm, you know, and mm. it's authors from all walks of life, your self-published authors, your guys who are bestsellers, your guys who are like your literary uh, writers, you know, so you got exposed to, we also got exposed to the publishers, you know, you got exposed to your independent publishers, your big trade publishers. So you got to know different people within the, within the book system. But also because I also work in education, uh, you got to also meet people who are doing reading related activities. Um, I mean, reading activities that related to education um, for learners and then also for adults and all of that. So did you see the gap when it comes to the issue of authors not being there, out there? Did you see the gap? That's the mm. reason why. How did you see the gap? Like what, what, what triggered you? You know what? Um, another thing, let's go back to also how I grew up. Um, so I remember in my teenage years, I used to listen to a show on SAFM. It was called SAFM Literature on a Sunday afternoon. Um, and 
and I, I, I eventually ended up meeting Karabo Huleng, the literary journalist, the famous literary journalist, who, who was host of that show. Nancy Richards hosted the show before as well. I love both people. But I ended up meeting, um, show, show, so Karabo actually became my hero, basically. And I met her at the Vets Writing Center. She became a mentor to me. She's a, a very well-established literary journalist. She's been in the industry for 20 years. So with someone like her, she, um, she'd tell you that within literary journalism, it's important to, you know, literary journalists are important or book journalists are important because they get to amplify um, basically how the like the reach where that authors have so also if you have a book event and stuff like that especially your modern literary journalists they've got a very good network on social media very strong following from the literature space even from the education space the guys who deal with reading they've um some so, you know say so they follow the literary journalists so if you talk to a literary journalist you give them your book and then you ask them um can you maybe read the book and review it for me um you know your newspapers a lot um, they would, they would, they always want the literary journalists to review books because they know these guys have a huge following, and it's easy for for, for the books to get sold, because now the the public knows the books are out there, they know where to get them, and that drives up book sales. But you see, my problem is, um, I noticed that it's easy if you get published by a, tradi a traditional trade publisher, your Jakana, Jonathan Ball, whatever. It's easy because those authors, you automatically get assigned a book publicist the moment your, your, your book is published, you know. So the book publicist will make sure you get interviews on radio, on TV, um, in newspapers, you know, so that that drives up book sales. Um, but now, if you are a self-published author um, and or, or you have your own independent publishing company, and you don't have a book publicist, you're going to have trouble selling your books. Let's talk about it. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about it. The role of publicist yes. is. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so I would I would say that the role of a publicist, um, normally it's, as I just said, you have to organize media interviews for your authors. And for me, I mean, I don't, I'm not just, in terms of, um, I think being a book publicist for me fits in more with my whole wider portfolio as someone who works within book marketing. So, uh, sure, I'm a book publicist. Normally, I work with around six authors at a time. So, we become a family, those six okay. authors at a time. And we help each other. We become a team. So, obviously, um, you know what? I really respect um, writers, people who publish books. Because I, I, I also eventually want to publish a book. I'm an aspiring author. So, I'm going to be like, I see your books. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to also have my book finally, you know. So, when I work with these authors, it also inspires me that one day I can do it, you know. But it seems for now, um, yeah. It will just make the most of me doing the marketing until I'm able to finally also produce a book. But basically, I would say you work with six authors normally. I like six. It's a nice, even number. It's big enough for a book to get to, uh, yeah, to get to different networks. So if you work with six authors, all of them, they, life, they love books, they like reading. But now, maybe some of them are writing fiction, some nonfiction, some children's books, some adults' books. But they come together now. They're in different geographic regions. I, I try my best to work with people in Gauteng, in Joburg. But inevitably, you'll find an author now moves to Limpopo. But it's not a problem because, I mean, over the years now, you start to get to know the curator of this book festival in Limpopo, in Northwest. So you start to, to your network now actually starts becoming out of Gauteng. So now, you're not, it's, so it's not that bad now if you work with an author that's outside Gauteng. It's not that bad because now you can link them up within their province okay so with this um if we become a a group um so i'll be like the seventh one and then all the authors they come together i always emphasize you must do a book exchange minimum of one book exchange with another author normally i look at your books i'm like okay you've got a, a sports book your sports book is about running i've got i've got one of my my author's books it's about running and and i and then i also know that um okay there's another book about running so I'm like, hmm, these authors both like the sport of running. They've written on the sport of running from different perspectives. So and both these people, if they exchange books, they will be able to plug each other in terms of different sporting organizations. They'll take the, you know, so now they'll work as a team, as partners. Because if you want to do this book industry thing alone as an author, you're not going to do well. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. So okay. So you spoke about one of the role of publicist is to take you know you to interviews on radio and TVs and stuff. Um, how do you, as a publicist, then build a relationship between those media streams? Okay. So you know, to be, to be quite honest, um, you know, I've always want growing up. I always wanted to be a journalist. So, yeah, I always wanted to be a journalist. I should have done journalism at university. Yeah, but life kind of, yeah, made me somehow end up in education. Um, but I think what you, what, you, what you actually learn, you know, even if you're in the writing center at, at, at VITS, like where I started, um, you learn that a lot of people who write books are journalists. So... Uh, like one of my authors right now that I, I, I'm, I'm, he's, he wrote a book on running. Um, yeah, he's a very well-established sports journalist. So he's been working the industry for numbers of years, for number, yeah, for a number of years. So, I mean, he, he will automatically, now I ask, I'm like, okay, sir, Mr. Mamabulo, can you help me out? Because I know you've got media contacts. You were sports editor at this newspaper, whatever. So I, I end up knowing my authors very well. And a lot of authors are journalists. So you make friends with a lot of journalists. You have to be honest. I make <laughs> friends with a lot of journalists. Um, not just because, obviously, they, they, they can help me and my authors and my book and my bookshops. Because I don't just market for authors. I also market for book events, for bookshops, um, yeah, that type of thing. So I think for me, it's about developing the entire book system. Yeah, okay. because yeah. you cannot. And I, I think I'll just, I'll just put, I'll just end here for now. Or in I, I, I say to the people in education, um, you know, guys, it's good for you to make um interventions at schools start reading. Yeah, it's good for you to go to the district, do a district improvement program, train the teachers, teacher development for reading. It's good. But if you keep ignoring the book industry, which is the industry that is vital for, to support reading activities mm. within education, you your reading activities and even your your goals for education will not be reached. You will keep having the great force who cannot read for meaning. Because you guys are not supporting the, the children's book authors, you know. So I think the guys in education, you know, the problem is working in silos. The guys in education, your education specialists and stuff, they keep going to their conferences, their education. And then the guys in the book industries, they keep going to their publishing association meetings and the, um, the book fairs. But these guys, they hardly ever come together. You know, there are some organizations, fine, that break the silos and bring them to, to roundtables. But in general, these guys don't come together. As a published, are you planning to bring I, us together? I do. That's exactly what I do. I <laughs> okay. facilitate discussions. I facilitate discussions. In fact, last night I was on a Teams call. Um, I've learned to work with online because it just beats distance. So people from even someone, we had someone from Cape Town last night coming in. Um, and so, so th we have different parts of the book industry. Yesterday, uh, Patricia, she was, yeah, she was uh, cheering us or dialoguing us. We, it's an informal dialogue that we that I host on a Thursday evening uh, with a community of practice of teachers, uh, education specialists, of authors, publishers, and we talk about all of these various issues. And me as a publicist. Um, I, I, I've, I've gotten a lot of experience ex facilitating at book events, at book fairs. So I facilitate these conversations so that the guys keep having these conversations to keep sorting out the problems for each other. Yeah. You know, I, I, I like what you said very, because one of, one of my uh, fellow author, author once said to me, many people would like to say uh, readers are leaders, you know, mm -hmm. but, but he said, I disagree. <laughs> And then he said, writers are leaders. Oh, hello. Not readers. Okay. You know, writers are leaders <laughs> because readers need us writers. Mm. What are you going to read? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you understand? Yo. So what, what you are saying is very, is very important. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very true, you know. And many people don't see it that way. We always mm. talk about readers, readers, readers. <laughs> but <laughs> we neglect the people who feed the readers. Mind blown. Yeah, exactly. Who feed wow. the readers, you know. So I like, I like what you said. But for now, let's just go for a short break. Break. Then when we come back, we are going to continue with a very interesting uh, conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going for a short break. We will be back shortly.
Welcome back to On Writing with Ungaravile, a show that aims to promote reading and writing in our communities. We are still having Ausnelisiwe Mufuta Nyana, who is sharing more about book publicity. Ausnelisiwe, why is it important for authors to use the service of a publicist? Okay, so it's important to understand that as an author, especially if you are a self-published author, you have inevitably you just become an entrepreneur by default if you're a self-published author most times, you know, because unfortunately the system, and we're trying to sort that out within the book industry, you know, within education strategy for reading. We're trying to sort out the system such that in, we can have a lot of uh, stores that accept books by independent authors, or we can have indie bookstores, you know, that specialize and have uh, your, 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 in, your, 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 independently published books. So at the moment, obviously, very few, um, very few um, bookstores accept books by self-published authors, you know. So now, now you as a self-published author, now you have to sell the books yourself because we're, I, I mean, now I've developed a good network of lovely independent, lovely bookstores that want independently published books. Now it's fine. You know, that's great. We can talk about them at the end. But, at the end of the day, if, if yeah, I, again, now, if you don't have a book publicist, the book publicist, part of my job is to, is to befriend the bookstore owners. Then I source, I, I get to know their bookstores. I get to know which bookstore likes which books. Because even if they're, they're an indie bookstore, right, a bookstore that, that, that accepts self-published authors or independently published authors, um, the bookstore owners know their market. They have a target, a certain target market. They'll tell you, I want fiction or I don't want nonfiction. I want short fiction. I want poetry. So even the bookstore owners, they have a certain niche market that they're targeting. They will not necessarily take in everyone's book, you know. And also it depends on the geographic location of the bookstore. Is it somewhere in Midrand? Is it in Soweto? By, by default, um, you know, that there'll be a different target market. So I get to know, a book publicist will get to know you, the author, will read your book and will get to probably say, this this book will do well if we take it to this bookstore. If we launch it in this bookstore, this, this, this author will meet the target market readers. So again, I mean, you lose out if you don't have a book publicist because... You know, as a writer, I see a lot of writers, they become prolific writers. They write more than one book. They like writing. But now, if you are now having to, to do all of these things, you have to market your book. You have to go to bookstores to negotiate deals. Um, now you have to look for places where you can do book launches. Now you have to... It's become too it's much. It becomes too much for you, yeah. you know? So, so it, it's better. Just um, consider it consider its investment in terms of uh, your your career as a writer, if you hire a book publicist, like we're not expensive, so I work on a client to client to client basis. Some yeah, I, went, I, I was yeah, coming. Yeah, I was I'm actually sure. coming there. Yeah. I wanted to ask because many authors will say, especially self published authors, like mm. you said, they will say, remember self-publishing is difficult to self-publish especially when it comes to finance mm. you know just to to finance your 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 work your project yeah. as a self-published author now again now you are saying i must look for a publisher that i must pay now <laughs> where must i where am i gonna get the money to pay now i'm not another person <laughs> or else i'm struggling to sell my books you know, you know? this is this is not new to me on Karabili. i've been in the industry for years so i kind of you know authors have made me understand their journey so they'll tell me, Nelly, I took out a loan mm -hmm. to, to be able to print out this book and all of that. So I'm in debt, you know, which is, it, it, it's sad, I mean, to be able to get to those points. But now I speak to the guys in education and I'm like, guys, what author development um, programs do you have? I was speaking to a librarian at um, uh, the GDE, Gauteng Department of Education. I was speaking to her, I, was, I, I, I called her the other day, I'm like, yo... Um, I know last year you had a program for author development and then you are buying books for the Department of Education from self-published authors, young authors. I think it was under 35. Um, so, you know, the Department of Education, because they get the share of the budget when it comes to reading. Um, the government um, throws money at the Department of Education to implement reading programs. It doesn't throw money at the arts, the, the DSEC, Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. 
I mean, and the worst part is DSAC has to share their budget between sports and then the arts now, you know. So by the time um, it gets to the books and publishing or LIS, Library Information Services, they've got a way smaller budget than the guys in education. The guys in education, um, the education department are swimming in money for reading, you know. So it's, it's, it's such a tough, tough, tough thing. But we work together now. As we break the silos, we get to have breakthroughs. Yeah, because like you say, that project is actually every year, the one of the Houghton, yeah, the Young Writers Project. Yes. Yeah, it's actually every year where upcoming oh, authors lovely. can submit yeah, their books. But like you like you are saying now, the only challenge is that now, because it started three years ago, this project, you know, mm. and I've been following it. Uh, but now it's becoming more weaker now, you mm. know, than it, 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 it started. Because like last year, they were talking about budget, that the budget is not enough. You know, there were books that they actually uh, selected, but they didn't purchase mm. because of the budget, mm. you know. So now there's a lot of issues. Mm. And, and I think, you know, I thank God that you are there. You know, I think you become our voice, you know, yeah. to <laughs> to develop that conversations because of now really things are, are getting out of hand, you know, and, and you are you hundred percent right by saying, uh, I mean, education is is one of the things that the budget is actually they uh, they take it very serious mm -hmm. when it comes to that, mm -hmm. you know. I remember uh, when when I was still a student, uh, I think one of the MEC of education came. It was, I was, it was doing my first year at I was doing education also. And, and, and he came, and one of the things that he said, he spoke about the budget of education, you know. He said he always uh, emphasized that the first uh, money that must be is for education, you know. <laughs> so you, you remind me, you remind me that. So, but yeah, please do those uh, negotiations for us and conversation for us, you know, because we really need them. But let's continue. So you are saying authors will struggle if they don't have publicists. Mm. Because of the work is too much, yeah, you know. But then again, you are saying they must take it as an investment. In mm -hmm. other words, it's not for free. Mm -hmm. So how do you make it easier? Like you said, that it's not expensive. How do you make it easier, maybe, for them to afford you guys as publicists? Okay, so I also don't 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 work alone per se. Um, I formed a good network, and I've just um, yeah. I, I, I know other book publicists. I work with Miso. Miso, uh, yeah, she's studying, she's in the final year of PR and communications. Uh, she's based at Simulohong with me at one of the companies I work for. So I consult for a number of companies. Um, but um, but uh, so Miso's excellent at PR and communications. So basically, we, we, we basically... You know, at the end of the day, my heart is for independent authors, you know. Um, it's because I understand, I've worked, I'm going to say something very difficult now. It's emotional, it's difficult, but I've, I think every industry, we must have these hard conversations. You know, the, the publishing industry, the publishing world, the book industry in this country... Um, because of historically how things are, mm -hmm. you know, even mm -hmm. worldwide. I mean, English is, English is, uh, I think I was with someone yesterday, an academic, she, he was saying how English has got this hegemon, is it this hegemonic force or this hegemonic power, you know, um, that they take over, you know, I mean, the, I mean, the books, if they publish in English, they'll, they'll fly, they'll, 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 they'll do great. You know, sometimes they, so that's another issue within publishing, the, you know, so I see for me, my heart is for independent authors, but also the ones writing in indigenous languages, because they have it the worst. They have it the worst, honestly. Um, our publishing industry and book industry is not entirely transformed. And I, and I don't, please, I, I, I try, I'm not trying to be racist or anything, because also is transformation is not just about race. It's also about gender, you know. It's, yeah, it's also about uh, disability. How many able-bodied people versus people with disability do you see in the book industry leading mm -hmm. big publishing companies? Mm -hmm. It's just a lot. Transformation is completely, it's wealth, it's, 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 yeah, it's a very multifaceted thing. But all I'm saying is, it's a, that space, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. So for me, these past six years, it has never been about money per se. It's, my, my life is about purpose. I didn't choose to become a book publicist. I was talking to my mentor the other day. Um, she's an academic and a storyteller and a children's book author and stuff. 
Um, you know, she said to me, she's like, Nelly, did you, do you think I woke up one day and I wanted to be a storyteller? <laughs> yeah, you know? And I was like, no. She's like, yeah, I've learned to adapt to life. That sometimes... Um, and, and I've learned to be flexible. I've realized that uh, life will lead you where you need to be. If you believe in God, it's God leading you where you need to be. So, uh, you know what? With this book publicist thing, um, for me, it's a part-time gig being a book publicist. That's why I don't have to charge authors exorbitant rates. I'm focused on my, my career and education. So, yeah. Okay. And, you know, I see the books in front <laughs> of you there. Yes. And this lead me to my next question. Which genre of books do you prefer mm. to pub publicize? <laughs> so, yeah, the books I've got here, um, I, I've got these because um, I have to facilitate at a book event for a book club coming up. So I have to complete reading this book. Um, and this is a, oh, my goodness, this is a nonfiction book. It's published by an academic from Vitz Press. Um, so, yeah, I think he's in the sociology department. Adverts, but Please read the book for us. What is the book? Oh, it's called uh, These Potatoes Look Like Humans. Okay. Yeah, so by? It's, it's by Umbu Sowenkosi. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a good quality book. I've started reading it. I'm not yet done. Um, so I'll be, I'm reading it because I have to facilitate the discussion between the book club and, an author, and the author. Okay. And, yeah, and then this one is an oldish book. It's an extremely old book, but it's a classic. It's, it's uh, Dante, The Inferno. Mm, um, okay, yeah, okay. I'm reading it because I've fallen in love with Italian literature. <laughs> um, I went to something called the Dante Festival at, at Vids, um during the writing festival this year. And so the third day happened away from the Vitz Writing Center and it happened in, yeah, something called the Humanities Graduate Center. So the Dante Festival was a partnership between the Italian Literature Department and the English Literature Department at Vitz. And I, I mean, I didn't even know who Dante was. When I went there, I was like, guys, I thought Dante was like a philosopher or something. And they're like, no, Nelly, let's school you, these academics. They're like, Dante was an Italian poet and a politician. He wrote um, an, an epic poem. So this is a poem. It's, I've never seen, it's like it's an epic poem. Apparently there's five books, but they're all a poem. Um, an epic poem and it's the, it's about hell, you know, but I like how they unpacked it, you know, and these academics, as much as they're academic, there's also postgraduate students within the society who ran the Dante Festival. I'm part of the Dante Society Festival now, I'm not festival, so Dante Society now. Um, but you know how, how they, how they, how they like this Dante book and the other five books that are part of the epic poem is Inferno, obviously that's hell, you know, and they were talking about how we all sometimes experience our own personal hell, you know. So that really touched me, you know, that sometimes the way Dante articulated some things in his poem, you know, it touches on every human, the hell we sometimes go through, you know. So that's quite deep for me. So I'm reading this because of the Dante Society. So it means you... You don't choose um, a certain fiction, I mean, no. certain genre. Nah, in Zulu, but he's on Kinsi Poziawa. So, everything. <laughs> okay, all yeah. right. Let's talk about, um, I mean, you, how will I know as an author that my books are selling because of you as publicist? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Nkarabile, that's such a, I, I, yeah, that, that, that's a very important question. Within marketing, uh, you have to, if you, if you are a marketer, that's, yeah, that's proper. You have to be able to track that mm -hmm. the sales are because yes. of you. Yeah. I remember I went, I was selected for a copywriting bootcamp. So copywriting is writing for advertising. And you need that skill as a book publicist because you manage social media accounts for, sometimes I don't like, I, I've never managed a social media account for an author. I think that's, that's a bit dodgy. I like authors to manage their accounts themselves. But I've managed for publishers, I've managed, I still manage a number of accounts on social media for book clubs, for, yeah, book organizations and stuff. So I think it, it's, that's, that, that question is difficult. You'll never truly completely know that all the sales are because of you. You'll never be able to track each sale back down to you. But um, there is that thing. I think if you listen to 702, where John would say, I used to listen to John back in the day, 702, he'd say, um, tell him I sent you. 
you know if you, <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying so so if if they also if if my readers they go to a bookstore or whatever um yeah or they come to a launch and whatever you know also some book clubs are very very organized um like come from fat okay. cats we are, we are just going to have to pause it okay. there because of a short break yeah. then when we come back I want us to continue on sure. that, you know, yeah. We're going to continue from John there, then we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming back shortly. The Creative Corner with Nolo Nolls, a cozy and inspiring show that features interviews with artists, showcases their work, challenges and successes. Every Tuesday at 2 p.m. only on Share Radio. Tune in live on Facebook, YouTube and TikTok. This is Share Radio. Welcome back to On Writing with Ungaravile, a show that aims to promote reading and writing in the communities. We are still having Aus Nelisiwe Mufutsanyani talking about book publicity. Let's continue, please, where we have stopped. <laughs> How will I know that <laughs> my books are selling because of your work? And you're talking about John Day yes. with uh, SAE Yes, yes, that's yes, seven and two back in seven the day. Yes. Um, you know what? So within copywriting, because I went to that copywriting bootcamp, I was selected for it. Um, there are various methods where you can track. Um, you know, sometimes, um, especially if like radio, um, if you if you hear an ad, um, in the ad they'll tell you, or let's say, especially the radio host. Um, they'll tell you um, that if you use this code or maybe they'll say use John as the code to go and purchase the, the book online on this website. In that way, you know um, they heard the advert about your book on John's show. So there are more technical ways of knowing uh, within the advertising world. Um, but as well, with me, um, I'm, I'm very flexible. Um, you will notice that on, on Instagram, it's not like I have a huge follower. Uh, like, I'm a, I don't try to be an influencer, but, um, you know, my, my Instagram account is very active and I have, I have a good network of people who follow me. Um, not, not, not a lot of people, but actually very strategic people within the book industry and the literacy space who follow me. So if I share your post, you're probably going to get a follow from an organization or something. Okay. You know, so you'll be able to see. That's just why I always tell all of my authors. I'm like, for me, if I, if I'm your, if I become your book publicist, because I also don't want to work with every single author. I only work with your, with you as an author. If I believe in your book, if I like what's, <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's we're just different. Okay. If, if, if it resonates with me, I, I, you know, I will work with you. So how will you tell me that you don't, you are not comfortable <laughs> to work with me? Uh, okay. So, so I think as well, we're language people. We know how to put things. You know? So I will maybe say something like, because at the end of the day, um, you know, we're all different. Life is all about journeys. Yeah. If I'm not meant to be in your life path and whatever, yeah, you'll get redirected to where you're, wherever you're meant to be. And even me, if you don't want me to be your book publicist, you'll reject me in whatever way. Yeah. And I'll get redirected to whatever, yeah. wherever I'm supposed to be. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I try, yeah. and, I try and be spiritual about these things, you know. So I think for, for, for me, honestly, I try my best to... I, so now it becomes a two-way thing, you know. Um, normally, I go to book fairs, but I've, I've been at one million book fairs over the last six years. So I'd go to book fair, I'd pick up the author's book, I'd meet them, I'm like, mm, I like this author's vibe, you know, that type of thing. But I always say one thing. I think I'm now, like, digressing from your question. Um, but I, I always say one thing um, to, to authors. I always ask you, do you have a social media account? A lot of them, because they're writers, a lot of them are introverts, they just want to focus on their writing, not the world and whatever. So a lot of them will be like, oh, no, I don't like social media, I'm not on social media. I'm like, yo. And then you'll have authors who love social media, who are on there and, uh, and, and you know, they curate their content properly. They know that um, it matters, their public image. Mm. And then I'm like, and then, you know, I've got an author who I work with as well, you know, uh, he just linked someone to an interview recently on Power FM. And I don't know, he's been on SABC. That author's excellent, you know, because he gets all of these media interviews on these stations and then he gives them to me. He's so kind. That, you know, very kind gentleman, young gentleman. 
Um, but as well, I like him because he's also realized that as an author, you need a minimum of one or two social media accounts. This is the fourth industrial revolution. Mm. In order for you to do proper book marketing, you, as an author, you can't just say, I'll, I just want to focus on books and writing, shut out the world, not going to work. Now, tell me about if an author comes to you, it's a follow-up question, actually, mm. you know. Is it guaranteed that when I work with a publicist, my sales will increase or my brand will be visible? Um, obviously, um, there are different types of, pub no, not types. Um, we have your publicists with, you have to, you know what I, what, what I think, this will be up to the author. Yeah? You have to also, um, the thing is, Authors, if they see that you're doing good for them, you're linking them up to good opportunities. You're linking them up. Every time there's a book festival, you call them up. Because I also I also get headhunted to curate book festivals as well or to become part of the organizing committees of book festivals. So I'll call, I'll, they're, they're, then the queue, the, then the book, fest, book festival director will ask me, they're like, Nelly, we know you've got a, a good network. Um, <clears throat> what, what panels do you want for this book festival? Then, because I know I've got six authors that I'm working with, <laughs> I'm going to put them all on the panels. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, so it, yeah. it will have to be with you as, a, an, as an individual author. You have to Google. A book publicist normally has done has articles written about them. They've done media interviews. I've done podcast interviews. I've been on many shows. So if you just Google my name, quite a number of hits will come up. So I do have a, a slightly public profile. So you, so yeah, you, you know that in that way, your book is going to get some sort of public attention. No, that's great. I'm not going to leave this question. You know, <laughs> before we finish, I, I, have to, I have to ask this question because it has been a case where self-published authors are complaining or concerned about getting interviews, especially on those big media, you know, mainstreams. They are complaining that they have to pay some money. Mm -hmm. You know, as a publicist, please give us insight about that as a publicist. What's happening? Oh, my word. Um, you know what, Unkarabile, I'm not going to sit here and say that I know the corruption that that you that you've just talked about i mean honestly i just learned now when you just said that to me it just came as a shock to me i mean i'm i'm half the time i'm doing stuff in education so i know the corruption side in education <laughs> you know and then i but i also know i've been made aware of the corruption side in dsec departments of sports arts and culture i've been made aware of the procurement stuff and all of that but now, if you're talking to me about the media side, that's very painful, actually. And I'll have to go myself and go do personal research about this this issue and how it can be addressed. I think I'll bring it up in one of my focus groups that I run online, especially with the guys who are in literary journalism or yeah, the, the journalistic people, and we'll ask how, how to safeguard authors and how to make sure we have integrity within um, the media space. But can you secure interviews for them without any money? Absolutely. I've been doing that. I've been, I think, I, I think we, we, we work very well. You know, one thing you'll notice about live is you work with an author and, you know, as a book publicist, uh, you know you'll help them out with marketing. But normally, now I select authors who, man, I, I look at the entire profile. I look at what you do for a living. Some of them are academics. Um, and I look at your work, the research work that you do. Does it vibe with me? Is it opposite to what I stand for? So then maybe we're not going to work well together. I look at you, I'm like, oh, okay, do you work in IT? Great, fantastic, because I run a hybrid reading and tech working group from Timulukhong. I'm like, great, you work in tech, you like reading, you're a writer, great, you know. So so honestly, again, I, I feel like I'm digressing, but um, I, I know how to link, yeah. Okay, <laughs> now we are, unfortunately, time is not on our side. <laughs> yes. Let's finish by knowing mm. if people want to, you know, work with you, as their publish, mm. publicist, they want to have that, you know, book marketing, book visibility. Where can they get hold of you? 
Okay, as I said, I've got a very active uh, Instagram account. I'm also on Facebook. And a whole lot of the people in the book industry and education space are also on Facebook with me. So, Nelisiwe uh, Mufutsanyana on Facebook. Maybe that uh, my surname is super hard, um, but I think by the time the show is published, um, uh, there'll be a caption with my name and surname. So, you can look mm-hmm. for me on Facebook. Yes. You can also catch me on, on um, Instagram. I no longer use Twitter. So Facebook and Instagram, it's Nelly Suyo uh, Mufutsanyana. You're also welcome to, yeah, use my, use my, my personal email, nmufutsanyana at gmail.com. I don't mind that. Okay. Thank you so much for coming to the show, Osneli. I wish we could go more, but unfortunately, time is <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our show. That was On Writing with Ungarabile, a show that aims to promote reading and writing in the communities. Please don't forget to subscribe, to share online. And my name is Ungarabile, and I'm saying to you, let's meet next time. Same place, same time, on Share Online.